In this video, let's take a look at the solution for bubble sort. Back here in replit, let's begin by defining the function signature. Function bubble sort. And this will have one parameter, ARR, which represents the array to sort. For example, if we have an array of five numbers and we pass that array into the bubble sort function and then log that array to the console, we should see the elements sorted in ascending order. Now what do we know about bubble sort? We know that we start at the first element in the array and compare adjacent elements till we reach the last element. That sounds like a loop. Let's begin with that. For let i is equal to 0, i less than array dot length minus 1, i plus plus, and curly braces. Within the loop body, we compare the element with the adjacent element and swap them if they're out of order. So if array of i is greater than array of i plus 1, Swap them using a temporary variable. So let temp is equal to array of i. Array of i is equal to array of i plus 1. Array of i plus 1 is equal to temp. These three lines swap two values and it's pretty helpful if you can remember it. One thing you might have noticed is we stopped at array dot length minus one since we compare i with i plus one. In our slide, you can see four is compared with 20 and that is effectively our last element. There is no need to compare 20 with an element outside the array. All right, with this for loop, we are now making one pass of the elements in the array. Next, we implement the logic to check if we should repeat this loop. And what is the check? Well, if elements have been swapped, repeat the comparison. To keep track of that, let's create a variable. The variable name is swapped. Now, we are going to wrap the for loop with a while loop. To be more precise, a do while loop. To determine if an array is sorted or not, we have to go through the elements at least once. And that is a perfect use case for a do while loop. So wrap with do and while. Now then, what is the condition to repeat this comparison? If the elements are swapped. So while swapped is true, keep running the for loop. But how are we changing this swapped value? Well, at the beginning of do while, set swapped is equal to false. And then within the for loop, if you are swapping the elements, set swapped is equal to true. And with that, we have implemented bubble sort. Let me summarize the code. We begin by going through the array at least once. We check if any adjacent elements are out of order. If they are not, we exit the do while loop since the array is already sorted. If we did swap elements, we go through the array again to make sure there is no more swapping required. If we encounter a swap, repeat the process. If we don't encounter a swap, the array has been sorted. I would recommend you trace this code with the slide we have here and that will give you a much better understanding. All right, let's verify by running the code. We see the sorted array. Our code works as expected. What I would like you to do is take a pen and paper and trace the function for a different array. 
perhaps once for a sorted array and once for a reverse sorted array where the elements are in descending order. That will really help you cement bubble sort algorithm in your mind. Alright, next it's time to determine the big O of our bubble sort function. Pause for a minute and determine the big O. Here is the cheat sheet which can be used as a guide. Pause now or let's estimate the big O together. Our function contains two loops. A for loop that is nested inside a do while loop. From our cheat sheet, it is pretty evident that the big O is quadratic time complexity. Big O is equal to O of n squared. As the number of elements in the array increases, the number of comparison increases by square of the number. Quadratic time complexity isn't great for sorting. But for now, I hope you were able to understand the bubble sort algorithm. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.